Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is custom validation in Power Virtual Agents using the new regular expressions features found in entities. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So number one, PBA has many out of box entities that can be used to validate inputs. So for example, we've got things like email addresses, cities, age, countries. And the benefit of these are is that once a user goes ahead and inputs the information, it gets validated against those entities and it won't let you actually proceed further into the conversation unless the data that you've inputted matches or aligns to the entity data type itself. So if you're being asked for email address and you just put in a random number, you're not gonna then process that data downstream. You know that you've got some level of validation up front. Now, if you do need to include some custom validation, you generally need to leverage some sort of extensibility strategy. So that could be Power Automate or even could be the Bot Framework Composer itself. Now, when it comes to Power Automate, failed validations becomes a bit of an issue. There's some friction that gets introduced because you can't override variables. So when the validation works, life's good, you call Power Automate, you get some sort of response, and then you continue on with your conversation. But what happens if it's invalid? Then you have to reprompt again, but since you can't override that variable that you initially captured, you then have to build some compensation logic to sort of see if the second time that you made the request it was valid. Now it even gets worse if you have to go and do that from a third time perspective. So that's where the regular expressions is, is gonna help us out here, especially when it comes to naming conventions and wanting to enforce that our inputs actually have been validated to a certain extent. Now, Bot Framework Composer has some pretty interesting validation. I've included a, a video on the channel previously about it, but naturally it's another moving piece, right? And it's another sort of learning curve. So it does work, but it's something that you do need to invest a little bit more time in itself. Now, recently the Power Virtual Agents team has introduced a new capability called regular expressions inside of our entities. And so this allows us to provide some validation using a simple regular expression statement. So let's go ahead, let's further explore this specific feature. So just to add some context here, so I'm in the PVA Maker portal and I've got entities. If I click on the left nav, what we're gonna see is that we've got a series of built-in entities that I talked about earlier in the slides. And what these do is these are pre-built for us. So if we go ahead and ask a question and want to receive the answer, we can specify essentially the type of entity we're expecting back. So in the case of age, we're going to expect a numeric. Now that could be represented in words like 35 or in numbers, the number 35 itself, but ultimately it should resolve to some object that represents an age. Same thing with cities, right? If we go ahead and, and provide a city, uh, we're not expecting, say, a number. So if you put 35 in a city, uh, we wouldn't expect that to resolve either. And so PVA includes many of these just to help you with the data validation that does take place and also essentially the mapping into the right data type itself, or I guess casting, if you will, from that perspective. Now, one of the, the benefits of using these entities is that if someone gives you invalid data, you essentially get stopped. You're gonna get continued to be prompted to provide the right data itself. So another good example is email. If I go ahead and provide an email and perhaps I leave off the, the extension, so .com. So I, I put in, you know, can't wear at your company and that's it, not .com. You know, it's gonna hold me up in the process until I put in a valid input. And I think that's kind of the, the benefit of and one of the core messages about this video is that anytime you pass that off to say Power Automate Flow, you're gonna have some challenges because whenever we call an action, we always get values returned and subsequently stored in variables. That becomes a little bit problematic when we get invalid data because that gets set to a variable and currently we can't go ahead and update variables. So that's why I'm pretty bullish on this specific feature. Now, in terms of how do we go ahead and create an entity or a, a regular expression entity, because that's essentially how they're going to uh, be 
manifest is we can go ahead and click on this new entity button up here. When we do that, we're going to see essentially, you know, two options. We've got a closed list. So perhaps you have like domain specific language in your organization and you want to include a series of valid, you know, strings that represent what that is. So here we've got an example of sizes, extra small, small, medium, large, etc. And then we've also got this option, which is new, to provide a regular expression. And this regular expression is what we're gonna use in our use case to validate a knowledge base article or KB article. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and see this in action. Okay, before we get too much further into the regular expressions, I do wanna just sort of highlight why this is important. Uh, when we talk about Power Automate. So obviously I love Power Automate, but there's sort of a, I'd say a little bit of friction here when it comes to validating information. Now, I would also call out that there is sort of a difference between doing some sort of a lookup to validate information, like maybe you need to call an API, maybe you need to go ahead and look up records in a database. That's a little bit different. Regular expressions won't really help you out with that. Uh, regular expressions are gonna help you with just the the format of the data, like are, is it in the right naming convention? And that in itself does have a lot of value. But if we look at Power Automate, so here what we're gonna do is do like a weather lookup. And you know maybe we needed to do, in this case I've got city, but maybe that's really a zip code. And so let's say I go in and, and I put in a zip code and I just you know go ahead and put uh, you know Phoenix in here. That isn't gonna resolve properly, right? So what we would do is we would send that you know, down to this flow. This flow could do some level of validation to say, hey, is this a valid zip code or not? But then the problem is we're gonna have this variable here. And so if everything works well, you know, Power Automate's gonna return a valid uh, response. We can then use that response downstream if we want to, but if it's wrong, what do we do? We have to essentially go ahead and add another action again. We have to go ahead, call the same action, and then we have to build some like compensation logic in order to reconcile this. So now we need to have a new variable because we can't use the flow response one. We have to create something new. And then we need to have some sort of logic here that says, you know, if flow response is this, or if flow response one is this, then we can go ahead and do it. But then what happens if after the second time it's not valid either? So you start to build a bit of a cascading mess from that perspective. And that's one of the reasons why I do like the regular expressions feature because we can keep everything, you know, simple. Uh, and once again, you know, when we're talking here, it's really about the naming convention. It's not doing a lookup per se, like we might still need to have additional logic there, but at least we'll know that we've got a solid KB article format if we're going to use this approach. Okay. So over to entities, uh, then what we can go ahead and do, is I've already created one, so I showed you this briefly before. I can go ahead and click on regular expression and then we're gonna see some examples here. So it's quite simple. You've got your name, you've got a description, and you've got a pattern. And then the uh, PVA team was nice enough to go ahead and provide some samples here. Um, obviously regular expressions is kind of a love-hate relationship sort of a thing. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, how many people truly understand this. I certainly don't, uh, don't aren't going to sort of confess to saying that I, I understand regular expressions end to end. Usually people go into their favorite search engine and look for common patterns and then copy and paste, which is totally cool. And so that's all we can do is go ahead and copy and paste examples into, um, you know, this pattern text box here itself. So let's close this and then let's go to the one that I had created. So I've got one called KB article. Um, I happen to borrow it, you know, from this example here. I think it's, it's relevant. And so what we're saying is we're expecting it to start with KB. And then what we're going to expect is that we can allow numerics between essentially zero to nine for six more digits. So we're going to expect to have like an eight character string, essentially, um, that starts with KB. And then we can have six numbers and those numbers need to be between zero and nine naturally from that perspective. So that's it, we go ahead, we configure that, we hit close, and now we've got this entity that we can go ahead and use inside of a topic. So let's head over back to the topics. 
I've created one just called find KB article. We've got some trigger phrases, KB or KB article. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we can ask a question like what, uh, what KB article are you interested in? Right. And so someone could go ahead and then provide that KB value itself. Now, what's important here is that we've gone ahead and selected this particular entity, right? So this is, if we wanted to include an email address, we would come down here and we would find email. But now what we're seeing is that, hey, we created our own entity. It's going to be based upon a regular expression pattern and we can go ahead and select it. And then naturally what we can do is save it into a variable. In this case, it's just going to be a local variable. And what I'm going to do here is just output the sort of validated KB article. Now, naturally what we'd want to do next is, you know, pass this value probably to a flow or maybe a composer dialogue that would go fetch the related KB from um, some sort of content server or content data store. So let's go ahead, let's run this. I'm just gonna say KB. And then what we'll do is we'll make this fail first. So what KB article? I'm gonna just say, oh, a good one. So naturally that is not gonna work, right? So this is going to be built in. Sorry, I don't understand. But then what's gonna happen is the question is going to be asked once again. And so if I went ahead and said, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, this will fail as well. Now we do have to be careful like this will follow the sort of typical behaviors of you know if you provide too many um, sort of incorrect answers you could um, end up in some sort of escalation or fallback but what we'll do here is we'll provide a good one so KB and then one two three four five six this should be good and we can go ahead and hit enter and then now we're gonna skip past uh, essentially that particular action and then we're going to just go ahead and display the response here itself. So some potential use cases I know I've worked with a customer before where they've got essentially user IDs. And so sometimes they do ask for someone's user ID. And this is different than their UPN. Um, it's something internal for them. And, you know, they've got a specific format for, you know, those usernames. And so this is uh, exactly something that they were looking for where if they could use a regular expression to validate that, then that would be great so that when they go ahead and do something downstream with that value, at least they know that they've got the right naming conventions in place. All right, so that concludes the demo. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a little while since I've talked about PVA, but uh, it was great to see this feature come out. There's, um, uh, it was something that I've been looking for. Uh, I know some other customers have been looking for, so great to see it. Now available, it is public, and uh, you'll be able to find it inside of your tenant. And um, you know, I can't say what's coming, but there's some pretty awesome stuff coming here in PVA as well. So look forward to more videos once that arrives, probably sometime in October. And uh, really looking forward to sharing that stuff with you, you folks as well. All right, if you are not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Wearsy. And uh, you're obviously on YouTube. Go ahead like, subscribe, comment. Those are always appreciated as well. Thanks, and we'll see you again next week on the channel.